Hello friends, and welcome to The Hanged Man in the Moon. Uh, this is a restart of my uh, website, DerekJohnThomas.com, and my YouTube channel, Derek John Thomas. Um, it's a reboot because I have been on a two or three year hiatus. Um, if you know me, let me just say hello again. If you don't know me, you can go to my website. Uh, there will be a link below, DerekJohnThomas.com, and you will see an introduction of who I am and some videos that I recorded about three years ago. Um, but again, I stopped because I found that the way I was creating videos was just not working for me. What I had done in the past was I had written an essay and posted that on my website and then tried to relate the information from the essay in a video like this. But I was so attached to the way I presented the information and the turns of phrases, the vocabulary, everything in the essay that I was trying desperately to memorize the essay and repeat it here on camera without reading it. And that was far too stressful for me. So I just stopped. I just stopped. And I've been, again, on pause for the last few years. But I'm back. And I'm starting a new series called The Hanged Man in the Moon. Now, The Hanged Man in the Moon is a name that I took or created from the tarot, yes? I've started reading tarot again. I used to read tarot when I was in high school and a little bit when I was in college, but I stopped because life drew my interest in other directions. And recently, in about a year ago, almost a year ago, I started reading oracle cards and tarot cards again and my interest has been rekindled. And so I'm going to use tarot cards to organize what I want to say for this video series. So this video series is not an oracle reading. This is not a tarot reading. I'm not giving divination. Um, I'm using tarot to help dive into and explore ideas relating to living an intentional life. That is the purpose of my website, Living the Intentional Life, is the title of my website. And that's what I want to talk about here as well. So what I've done is I've created a tarot spread for presenting information on YouTube. And then what I will do after I have recorded this video is I will write an essay to clarify to hone down the ideas that I talked about here, and I will post that essay on my site, DerekJohnThomas.com. Again, the link is below. So, enough promotion, and let's dive into what I read from the cards for this week. Uh, my intention is to do a weekly reading. Now, living the intentional life is what I want to do and I think is beneficial for everyone. Um, we all have the possibility of living intentionally and to live intentionally uh, having a vision of the life we want to live, having an idea of what long-term success looks like is very helpful. Now not all of us have that there are moments when I don't have that. There are moments when my vision of the life I want to live becomes cloudy or disappears. Um, in fact, I remember back when it was yesterday and I wasn't sure exactly what I wanted to do with my life. Um, but we recover and hopefully we can find that vision again. The thing that I've discovered is even when we do have that grand vision of the life we want to live, 
of what success would look like for us. It's not the same for everyone. My idea of success is not going to be your idea of success. But what does our vision of success look like? When we have that in our minds, often we encounter roadblocks on our way. Yeah? I've discovered for myself, and I believe many of you have as well, that moving in the direction of our intended lives is not a direct path from A to B. Yeah? I've discovered that my life is a winding path that sometimes doubles back on itself, on itself as, it, as I move towards the life I want to live. And that's okay. That's what helps make life interesting and creative and intriguingly mysterious. And as we are moving, generally in the direction of the life we want to live, we will often come into blockages, blocks. Um, so what can we do? What can we do when we have blocks? Maybe it's a creative block. Maybe we just lose our sense of the direction we want to go in. And we lose our sense of power. So we start looking for someone to help us. We look for another person to move us forward. If I just had another person here with me, I could do what I wanted to do. I found myself thinking that many, many times. And having other people is great, it's wonderful. Having a group of people that will move through life together with you is a dream come true. But even though we are working together, moving together, creating together, we are still on our individual paths. And even if we have a team at our side, behind our back, we can still discover that we are facing a block. And the team is not going to be what will get us past that block. So what do we do? Well, meditation is a great idea. One way to get past that block, to get through the block, is meditation. And many teachers of the intentional life, one of my favorites, for example, is Wayne Dyer, um, who passed away in 2015. Um, recommends meditation for all of us. And I do as well. Meditation is, I think, one of the most important tools, if you will, though it's not a tool, tools in our toolbox for clearing out the clutter in our lives. Um, going into contemplation will move us through creative blocks and dependencies on other. However, I've also discovered that, and maybe you have too, meditation can also be an ending point, that we get locked into meditation and don't move through it, through it to the next step. So what can we do? Um, one way to do it is to realize that the block that we're discovering is usually because of some self-limiting beliefs. Now, we've created the block for ourselves most of the time. And meditating our way through it is wonderful, but we need to meditate through it to something else. And realizing that there is a block that we are creating, that we have created the self-limiting block, and then redirecting our energy around that block will be the best way to get through it. You've heard of writer's block. The way through writer's block, many people say, is to pound your way through, to just write, to just write, to just write, which is helpful, helpful for many people. But that's also a way of redirecting your energy away from the blockage to doing something. So doing something, whether it's actually the creative thing you want to do or something else, will help move us through the block, out of meditation, back into uh, the forward momentum that we are looking for. 
then we can often feel a sense of disconnection. Now, even though there's not a block in front of us, we sometimes feel a disconnection from the intuition or the source of our inspiration. Um, and that's okay. That's okay. How do we, but how do we solve that? How do we get past that? The best way to get past that, in my experience, is self-care, self-love. And when I say self-love, I'm not talking about sitting in a corner and contemplating, uh, complimenting ourselves. Um, though that's a very helpful thing. Yeah, affirmations are a very useful tool as well. But self-love is more than just affirmations, telling yourself that you love yourself. It's accepting and loving yourself where you are at the moment. Even though you aren't moving forward at the moment, I still love myself for where I am. I have faith in myself, in this time, in this moment, with these circumstances. I can still find that I love myself, even though I'm not the being the best version of myself. I can still love myself, and I can love myself through that feeling of disconnection. And the more that I encourage the love for myself, and then the love for those around me, I find that that spring of energy from my source, this wellspring of inspiration and intuition opens again. And then I can start taking action. Take action from the intention that I'm reconnected with. Yeah? Action for action's sake can help us get through blocks, but action from intention will move us toward the life we want to live. And then there are times when we are successful and that can be a problem too. Have you ever noticed that? There are times when things just start clicking, when things seem to be going the way you want to go, we want them to go. And maybe there's a new opportunity that appears for you. And suddenly behind your thoughts, there is a little voice that starts telling you that you're getting away with something. Something, this new flow in the direction you want to go, this new opportunity is not your creation, that you're stealing something away from somebody else, that you're getting away with something. Do you, have you ever felt that? I have. I felt that. when an opportunity has come to me in the past, there have been times when I thought that, you know, I didn't really deserve this, that I've gotten this, but it's not really mine. Um, what did I do to get this opportunity? All opportunities that we get are ours. Um, that sense of getting away with something is the remnants or the subtle voice of unworthiness spring, speaking from our shadow selves. Um, and it's a voice that we can listen to but not act upon. What do I mean? If you press that voice down, if you try to eliminate that voice, if you try to ignore that voice, it'll just get stronger. Now, it will, that voice will start speaking in louder tones and then shouting from the abyss, you didn't deserve this, you're not worthy. And you are worthy. You are worthy of every blessing that comes your way. So, the best idea is not to ignore the voice or to push it away, but to recognize it for what it is. It's a voice from the shadows that you can realize is just a voice. It's not you, it's just a voice. 
um, and let it pass. Hear the voice, recognize it's not you, and let it pass. And then redirect yourself. Redirect yourself towards a sense of satisfaction. Growing a sense of satisfaction in who we are now and where we are going is going to be the second greatest tool you have. The first one being meditation. The second being moving towards satisfaction. Moving towards a sense of contentment and acceptance, more than acceptance, allowing who and where you are at the moment. So when that voice comes in, oh, that's saying that things shouldn't be going this good. I'm waiting for the second shoe to drop. Um, I didn't deserve this. When those thoughts come up, it's okay. Have the thought, recognize the thought, and let it pass. That's what meditation will teach you, is to learn how to let that voice pass so that we can turn back into the direction of satisfaction for who we are, where we are, and what we are experiencing. You've heard the adage, do the thing you love and you will love the thing you do, which is true, which is true. But I think some people misunderstand that. Some people misunderstand it that if I don't love what I'm doing now, the thing is to stop what I'm doing and go do something else. And sometimes that is the case. That's a matter of self-discernment. Self, um, but oftentimes when we find ourselves repeatedly stopping what we are doing and starting something new, something different, because we didn't love what we are doing at the moment, we notice that we take that dissatisfaction to the new thing. Yeah? And then that new thing we started is no longer the thing we love doing anymore, and then we look for something else. So if you've noticed yourself in that pattern, what can you do? You can still look for something else, but find ways to love what you're doing now anyway. For example, if you're in a job that you don't love doing, look for things you love in it anyway, while you're looking for the next thing. Yeah? Running away from it, unless it's an abusive job, unless it's something that needs to be escaped. But if working in a school, for example, is not your thing, I don't like the system, I don't like um, having to do all of this stuff, if you find yourself thinking those thoughts, instead of running away, find the thing you love in the thing you're doing now. And that will open up other opportunities. You will find ways to make those things grow. And when that inner critic, when that self-doubt comes back up, remember, we can always reach for satisfaction. Hear the voice, let it pass, reach for satisfaction. Reach for um, self-love. Reach for the things that will make this moment doing what we are doing now, enjoyable. And that will move us toward the life that we want to live. Even if that life you want to live is in a different job or is in a different city or is in a different lifestyle, loving where you are now will help move you there. So that's where the, the spread this week took me, yeah? Um, learn to learning to love where we are now will open the path to moving towards our grand visions, towards our long-term success. So if you enjoyed this video, remember to hit the like button, um, click subscribe uh, to and 
hit the, uh, the little bell if you want to get notifications of when I upload vo videos in the future. And also go to my website to look at what I've uploaded in the past. Um, I send you wishes for love, well-being, joy, and clear awareness. Those are your birthright as a spirit living in a body in this world. And I wish you a beautiful and intentional life. Thank you.